For anybody that builds websites, it's essential and super important that we also start to learn the basics and fundamentals of SEO. That way we could apply the best practices to the sites we build, making sure they're SEO friendly. And most importantly, to make sure we don't make SEO errors and mistakes that have a negative impact on the sites we build for our clients or for ourselves. And that's why I'm starting this new series, SEO for WordPress, and I'm gonna be teaching exactly just that. What's up everyone, I'm Jeffrey at Lightbox, and I'm really excited about this new series. This is something I've been planning for a while. I have a special passion for SEO. Now, this isn't about becoming an SEO expert. We are web designers and developers, and that is who this video is for, or anybody making their own website, because we're gonna start with the basics and fundamentals, and we're gonna make it really easy to understand going step by step. Today, we're gonna start with something easy that you could apply on your website. We're gonna be starting with HTML5 semantic tags. I'm gonna show you what those are and how to apply them in your Elementor and your Bricks website. And yeah, I am gonna be doing Bricks along with Elementor going forward because I'm starting to use both of them in my own workflow. Now there are timestamps inside the description if you wanna to skip to the page builder you're using, but I suggest to stick around for the whole video because I found a very surprising difference between the two and it'll all make sense at the end. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I wanna show you the HTML5 semantic tags and how to apply them to both your Elementor and Bricks website. The HTML5 semantic tags. These are the tags that wrap your web page's main components. So here is the structure of a regular web page. And these tags right here, these are your semantic tags. These tags, they wrap around the main components of your website. Now, if we start from the top and work our way down, we see we got our body tag that wraps up everything. That is already included in every website that we built. So we don't have to worry about that. But these are the tags that we do need to apply going forward. So we got our header tag, and this wraps around the top part of our website. Then right here, we have our nav tag and this needs to wrap around our menu. And then I'm gonna skip down to the bottom because on the bottom we got our footer, which needs to be wrapped inside our footer tag. Now in between our footer and our header, we have our main tag. And the main tag, this wraps around the content that is on our web page. And in that content, the content should be broken up into sections wrapped inside section tags. Now, the reason why this is so important is this tells Google what parts of the website are what. And then if we go down over here to our blog pages, you're going to see that things are a little bit different. I mean, our header tag, our nav and footer are all the same, but our blog post article, the article, the information should all be wrapped inside an article tag. And then if we are using a sidebar, the sidebar should be wrapped inside of a side tag. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna show you on Elementor a very simple way where we could apply all these and make sure these tags are all inside the right place. We wanna make sure our header tag, our nav, our footer, our article, our main, uh, a site, all those are inside the right locations that are gonna let Google know that this is how the website is structured, this is where the content is at. So let's go over to Elementor, and then after that, I'm gonna show you how to do it inside Bricks. Now, I thought Bricks and Elementor would be the same. There are some surprising differences, though, you'll see at the end. And here is the Elementor website we're gonna use now. I set some of it up and some of it I didn't so we could do it together. We're gonna to start from the top to the bottom. So let's go ahead and start with our header first and make sure our header has the right tags in place. So I'm gonna go here to edit my header. We're gonna to go to the main section that has our menu right here. Now this section, we got a logo, we got a menu, and I am doing some WooCommerce testing right now, so I got a WooCommerce cart here. So let's go to the section and go down here to your HTML tag. And this is where we're gonna find all of our schematic tags. So we click on it and you see we got all these options, header, footer, uh, main article section, a side and nav, everything we just shown right there inside the diagram. For this one, we're gonna click on header. And that is gonna make this whole thing wrapped in a header tag. Now it's really important that when we're adding a menu, Right now, the only really good option that we could do for SEO is to add 
the nav menu widget by Elementor because that's the only way we're going to get that nav uh, tag, at least by default, Elementor and Elementor Pro. I'm not sure about third party. We're just looking at L and L Pro. But as long as you add the nav menu widget, it's already going to wrap it around with the nav tag. So let's go ahead and take a look in the front end. And we're going to look at our inspect element. And if we go here to our section, you see right here, we have the header. And now let me move this over so we can look at our menu. And I'm going to open it up for our menu. And then you can see right here, the menu is wrapped inside the nav tag. And you want your menu to look like this. You want it to be nav. And then right underneath the nav, you want a UL L I A. This is the right structure right here, the right HTML structure for your menu. If you ever wonder why on some websites when you do a Google search and you see the main name, but then you see a couple other pages showing, a lot of the times it's reading from this. And if you ever get a client that says, hey, weird pages are popping up, you know, underneath here, it doesn't look right. Uh, inside our Google search results or no other pages are coming up. Almost every time I've had a client uh, have this error, I went in and looked and their menu was not set up right. It was set up with divs or it was set up with another tag. It didn't have the nav tag along with the right structure underneath it. Next up, let's jump all the way down to the footer because this one is super easy right here. Let's go and edit our footer and it's going to be the same thing we're going to go to the section that is wrapping our entire footer and we're going to go to our html tag right here and then we're just going to select on footer that's going to make sure that if we look in the front end a footer tag is wrapping the entire footer now let's look at the main part of our site the content and wrapping that up in a main and section tag now the main tag should wrap around everything that means if you got images titles text all these different sections no matter how long your web page is the main tag is supposed to wrap around all that now with elementor that's not so simple and i'll show you why right now uh so to do this and i did find a workaround to do this, we go to create a main section and on the main section right here that wraps everything over here in the HTML tag, we'd add main. So to make sure it's a main tag and then inside of it, I'd add intersections or the same thing with containers. It could be inner containers as well. And then we put an intersection and then inside each one of these intersections, we'd add an HTML tag over here as a section. Now, this for me is not ideal. It's a workaround, the only one that I could find uh, in order to do it the right way. And well, the thing is, I personally don't like using intersections. I don't like it. I like to try to keep it as light as possible. And I really hope that this gets fixed later on in the future. Uh, for me, it's just not the way I want to structure my build on a web page. And so I don't really wrap up all my content in a main tag. I would like to. And if I had to really optimize a website for SEO, like we're doing some higher level SEO services, then I would. And don't worry if you don't either, because it's not going to be a deal breaker or harm your SEO. It's just better to have it. It's not a huge deal, but you know, it's something that should be there. And I really hope that Elementor addresses this. And really quick, let me show you what it looks like. So if we go to the front end, and if I go to my inspect element here, let me move this over. We're going to go and see our tag. So see, we got the main tag right here, and that's wrapping everything in between the header and footer. And if we open up that main tag, you see, and this is why I don't like, we got all these divs right here. Uh, but if we open it, you see we have the sections in sight, which is good because this is telling Google that here is the content broken up inside this way. All right, so that is it for the homepage. Let's jump over to the blog post really quick. And here is a blog post right here and everything in the middle is part of the content. This is part of the blog right here. And then here on the side, we have two sidebars. I got one here 
and I got one over here. So what we need to do is we got to wrap up all the content here into an article. So that way it's letting Google know this is the blog content. And then we're going to wrap up these two sidebars into a side tag. So that's going to let Google know these are sidebars. So let's go over here to edit with Elementor. And for this right here, if you only have content and no sidebar, you would go into your section right here that wraps up everything and you go to your HTML tag and you would go ahead and select article. But I got the sidebar, so I want to do something a little bit different. I want to set mine to section right here and then I'm going to go over to my main content in the column and in the column i could create the tag as well so and right here in the column i'm going to go to my html tag and i'm going to put article and then here inside these two columns i'm going to make these aside tags so here's an aside and then this one here on the right i'm also going to make an aside and then let's go ahead and update it and take a look in the front end All right, let's take a look at the code right here in the inspect element. Take a look at our HTML. And we're going to see here our article. So we got everything wrapped up in the article. We got our sidebar right here in the aside and our other sidebar here. And that is it for applying the right semantic tags for your Elementor website. It's really easy, but there were a few challenges that I found doing this with Elementor. One of them is a homepage, being able to add a main tag that wraps around all the content. It's not ideal having to rely on using intersections and inner columns. And I really hope this is something that gets addressed and fixed later on. The other challenge that I found was the header. Now, if we go back to the header over here, let me open up this inspect element here. And if we go and hover over our header, you see we can only wrap that up in one section. But the header technically is everything above the full, everything above the content. Anything above, say, the banner should be the header, which would include uh, like a section like this, a top bar. Maybe your client has a top bar that has some social media icons or a phone number. Like that all should be wrapped up. Now there are workarounds, but it's a pain to do. And to be honest, I only do it if it is an SEO project where I got to really optimize it. Now as a workaround, I just make sure my section with the menus are done. But ideally, the entire header should be wrapped around. Because if we go here and let me open up my inspect element. And this is for all those that do know HTML and code that want to geek out a bit. I did find this right here. If we go to our top header right here, you see we got our header. Let me move this up. And they wrap it up in a div. It would be much easier if Elementor were to create this and just put a header tag already. That way the whole entire thing could be a header. And then same thing with the footer as well. If we go to our footer, we inspect the element here. This is cool because it's one section, but if you use multiple sections in your footer, uh, again, we're going to run across the same error. You don't want to use two footer tags or you don't want to use two header tags. So if you are going to optimize it, you got to keep everything inside one section. So again, these, these little things right here, they're, they're small, but they should be things that should be easily addressed, which is the surprise that I found when I was using Bricks. Now, let's take a look at Bricks because uh, Bricks is similar, but it's also different. I'm going to show you how on both of them. So we'll start with our header. And if we go to edit with Bricks, I'm going to edit the header. Now, if I go to a section, so I'm going to go to a section, the top section, and HTML tag, we have it as a section, but I'm going to make this a div right here for the top bar. And then the next section underneath it, I'm going to do the same. I'm also going to make this a div. Now, I think a div or a section should be okay, but remember when we did this inside elements or we wrapped it up inside of a header, but there is no header here. Now, I could add a custom and put my own tag that I want right there, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to put this inside a div, and I'm going to go ahead and save it. 
and let's take a look at it in the front end. So I'm going to inspect element, and this is something that I really like, and this was the pleasant surprise that I found when I used this with bricks, and that was it already wraps up your header inside a header tag. So everything, both parts, both sections, or however you want to break it down to sections or divs, they're wrapped inside header tags already. Now let's go ahead, go to the footer and take a look at it. And the footer is the same as well. So I'm going to go here to my section. And if I go here and check my HTML tag, there is no footer here inside there. If I take a look in the front end, inspect element, it's already wrapped up in a footer. So this was something I was really happy to see. This is way more SEO friendly. And then one more thing. Now let's look at the main page right here. And if we look at it now, remember, we got to want to wrap it up with a main. That would be ideal. Wrap up everything between the header and the footer and the main tag. That is the ideal way of doing it and everything else in sections. Now, if I go here to the main, just like how we had it in Elementor, if we go to the HTML tags here, Again, the main tag is just not here. I mean, we could do a custom one, but let's take a look what's happening in the front end. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the front end. Let me go to inspect element and look at that. The main tag is already there. So by default and already built in here, you have the header tag, the main tag and the footer tag already there. So your semantic tags are already there inside Bricks. And that was the big surprise that I found when doing it on Bricks as well. With Elementor, there is a work, there are workarounds with it. It's just a bit more work. And hopefully uh, that could change in the future. I am going to bring this up. I'm going to run some suggestions. Uh, I still love Elementor. This isn't an Elementor versus Bricks video. Not at all. The main thing about this video is learning how to apply these semantic tags to your website to make sure you're not making any SEO errors. And this is just the beginning. I want to go ahead and do these SEO videos little bits at a time because I find learning little bits at a time with them is really more helpful. It's easier to digest. Well, I hope this video helped out. I hope you learned something new and that the next time you build your Elementor or Bricks website that you are applying these tags on there. And I challenge everybody, if you are currently building a website, to go back to that website and start fixing up your tags the right way. It is going to be much better for your SEO. And I got a lot more of these SEO videos for WordPress coming out. And these are just for the web creators, the web designers and web developers. Because here's the thing. When you start to apply these and make your websites truly SEO friendly, you are adding more value in what you are putting out and giving to your clients. And the more value you are giving to your clients, the better you get. That's when we start raising our prices and earning more. You know, the best way to earn more that I always felt is to add more value. And definitely making sure the websites are SEO friendly, you're applying best practices, you are taking that time to learn and develop the skills and knowledge while you are adding more value to your clients. Well, if this helped out, don't forget all that good YouTube stuff, like and subscribe. That way you can get notified for the next one coming out because I have a lot more of these in the works right now. I'm going to be pumping them out steadily. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comments and I'll be back again soon. All right. Thank you.